Hi everyone and welcome again to another video on the history of medicine. Now the previous video was a summary of the different ideas about the cause of disease. Linked to that this video is a summary about the different treatments throughout the medicine course. Now ask yourself why do men and women spend years and years training to be a doctor? What's the whole point of medicine? Surely it is to help patients recover and get better. And to do that, of course, they need the correct treatment. As we go back through time, we'll see the different treatments that were used back in those periods. Second point, do you remember chronology? Med, Ren, Ind, Mod, Med, Ren, Ind, Mod, Med, Ren, Ind, Mod, Med, Ren, Ind, Mod. The four different periods, you've got to have them in the correct chronological order. Otherwise it's chaos and things don't make sense. Imagine you're at school, I don't know, Monday, lesson two, and everybody's got their timetable. Imagine if every pupil in the school went to the history, history room it would be chaos. The poor history teacher, go away, I'm not teaching you now. Follow your timetable. We've got to have the correct timetable, the correct chronology or things don't make sense. And that's what it's like in history. You have to have the correct chronology to fully understand the developments, the changes in medicine. So let's have a little look. There we have the four different periods. Now, the treatments, the first one there, bleeding and purging. It's in medieval times, it's in Renaissance times, it's in part of the Industrial Revolution. We don't really use it much today, although we do use leeches occasionally for bleeding. Why would they offer that treatment to bleed a patient or to give them chemicals, give them a drink to make them sick, to vomit, to purge the patient? Why would that be a treatment? Huge bonus points if you linked it to the four humours. Because they believed the four humours was a cause of disease, the treatment will address that cause. And because the four humours was wrong, probably bleeding and purging was wrong. But notice, there is not much change for a long, long time because they still believed in the four humours, King Charles II, 1685. Only very, very slowly, even in the Renaissance. What did change in the Renaissance? Have you got any ideas? Mr. Skull, Andreas Vesalius, found out about the skeleton. Yes, there were huge changes in anatomy, during the Renaissance, but not that much to do with cause of disease. So therefore the treatments didn't change. We still have bleeding and purging. The only real man who spoke out against that a little bit was a man called Thomas Sydenham. Look him up on my video, there's one on him. See what he said about bleeding and purging. But most of the time that remained a treatment. Treatment number two, prayer praying why would that be a treatment think back to causes medieval times renaissance industrial even people believed god was involved therefore if god is somehow involved it made sense to pray to god to try and be cured even today 21st century there are many people around the world who pray to God. There are many people who go on pilgrimage, a holy journey. And there are places around the world where people go and they try to get cured. There's a place in France called Lourdes, L-O-U-R-D-E-S. And people go there thinking it will cure them. So prayer is still a treatment as it has been throughout all of our medicine course. Third one, herbal remedies. Go back to medieval times. If you were ill and very, very poor, which is most people, 
You had to pay for a doctor. Hardly anyone could afford that. So many people went to the local wise woman and she would have knowledge of plants and herbs and she would concoct medicines for you. Hmm, what's that one? Oh, smells remarkably like orange juice. But back in medieval times, that's what would happen. Herbal remedies were used in medieval times, even in the Renaissance. Despite the increase in scientific knowledge about the body, they're still using herbal remedies. And in the Industrial Revolution, and even today, many of our tablets and medicines that we use today are made up of plants and herbs. So herbal remedies is one that has continued all the way throughout our medicine course. Now, if you go back to the Renaissance, 1500s, 1600s, here in Britain, ooh, arr, ooh, arr, I'd be a pirate. Ooh, arr, terrible impression, terrible impression. Yes, we did have pirates. The time of Queen Elizabeth I, our sailors went across the oceans and were trying to steal the Spanish golds from the ships that they were bringing from South America to Spain. So yes, we were stealing gold. Yes, some of our sailors on the voyages of exploration brought back things to Britain. Gold, uh, the potato, hooray for the spud. Maybe not so good, tobacco. They all return to Britain at this time. Sugar's another one. And other things that came in, other types of plants from around the world. So the voyages of exploration, the voyages of discovery, actually helped the herbal remedies because we had more plants to use for our medicine. So herbal remedy is there all the way through. And the next one, if you have a look, rest, exercise and diet. Medieval times, Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, modern times. Doctors have been very interested in that and actually said, you've got to do this. Now, whether we do or not, whether we do exercise or whether we do watch our diet, that's a different thing. But the treatment is there. Somehow rest, exercise and diet are important parts of our treatment and have been throughout the entire medicine course. Most of what I've shown you so far then hasn't really changed very much. A little bit here about bleeding and purging stopping. But the rest have all carried on. Now we're going to get to the changes. And again, it's the Industrial Revolution. Anesthetics and antiseptics. Now, back in medieval and renaissance times, they did have anesthetics, but it was herbal and not that effective. They did have some antiseptics, but again, it was herbal and not that effective. In the Industrial Revolution, we get the change to chemical anesthetics. The first one, hooray, we've all remembered chloroform. And the first successful antiseptic, hooray, we've all remembered carbolic acid. So there we see the change, and that has carried on into modern times. We have different chemicals now, but the idea of a chemical anesthetic and a chemical antiseptic has carried on from industrial into modern. And the final set of changes. Here we have them. Look at them. They're all in modern times. Chemical, what's that say? Chemical drugs, thank you very much. Like the magic bullets. Can you remember the first magic bullet? I'll give you 606 guesses. That's our Arson 606. Chemicals being used, magic bullets, antibiotics, penicillin, the wonder drug. Exactly, very well done. Genetic treatments, genetic medicines, 1950s, DNA. Oh, now we can try and tailor the treatments to the actual individual based on their genes. Radiotherapy, chemotherapy, blood transfusions after 1901 and Carl Landsteiner 
uh, discovered the four blood groups. Keyhole surgery, microsurgery, there is a whole list of different and modern treatments. Why weren't these available back in history? Any ideas? Well, the factors, science, technology, the knowledge, the individuals, they didn't have this. Science and technology wasn't available down here. The government wasn't funding the research. People weren't working together in teams. So all of the real big improvements in treatments, as you can see, have been in the last 200 years, with most of them in the last 100 years. Changes in treatments. So there we see. Remember what I said. Make your own or use mine. It's up to you, ladies and gentlemen. We've looked at cause of disease, the summary. We've looked at treatment, the summary. The questions could be very, very similar on this. For example, explain one way uh, how a treatment was different. And they could pick any treatment. Explain why there was progress in treatment over a period of time. Or not much progress occurred in treatment in a period of time. How far do you agree? Or advances in treatment is more significant in this period than that period. How far do you agree? And again, remember what I said. You say, oh, I agree. And here's my reasons. Here's my points. Here's my examples why, yes, it has changed. And no, here's why I disagree. Here's my points. You look at both sides of the argument and then give your overall judgment. There we have. A summary of treatments. Hope it's been useful. Speak to you soon. All the best now. Take care.